I think the sun's trying to poke out. Oh shush, I do not snore. Jeez, what's it gonna be like when we get to centipede? <laughs> Bang. Adam, the dog whisperer. A nice quiet morning walk. How does this happen? <laughs> This is 140 miles all the way down to Trinidad. Tonight's entertainment includes dodging oil rigs and praying that we don't get a visit from pirates. <laughs> Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. I'm Kiara and this is Adam. A few years ago, we walked away from our life on land to pursue travel and adventure aboard our floating home, the Millennial Falcon. Last year saw us improving ourselves and the boat whilst we tackled our first Atlantic circuit. Join us as we come full circle back to the Caribbean where we'll commence preparations for our next big challenge. Here's what you missed last week on Millennial Falcon. Oh, yeah. We are sailing. We're sailing! Once again, we're planning to head further south to the island of Bequay in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We got dolphins incoming! All heads! They've obviously spotted us and they're like, here we come! And we got 12 miles and we're home. Yeah. Just before I turned to a pumpkin. Had a glorious passage so far. Well, it seems we picked our weather window splendidly again because uh, we got in the day before yesterday. We checked in yesterday. The very next day, there's what we call a low rider passing through. Have a look what I found on the deck. <laughs> Breakfast? Where did that come from? The flying fish. You might just oh, must have like crap. missed his landing a bit last night. Oh, think wow. you'll be okay? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. I think the sun's trying to poke out. It's trying to poke out through the clouds. So we're gonna go for a bit of a swim. Um, I'm gonna, I really want to check our anchor and see if we like how much we've dragged. If we have, it'd be interesting to see. So we're gonna go for a swim. Let's go check our anchor. As you might have seen, we have dragged a little. We're in about 30 feet of water and we have about 170 feet of chain out. So we're at, we have enough chain. It's just that's how much the wind's been blowing, which is why we went in there and had a look. <laughs> the holding here is not known for being stellar. It's, yeah. uh, it's not terrible, but it's, it's not fantastic. It's dug in, dug in for now. We're gonna be on the boat working for the next two days. So really no point in worrying about it. If it hasn't dragged after what it's been through anymore, then it, it ain't gonna drag and the weather should be on the up and up from here on out. So made the decision to keep an eye on it. Well, it's always good to know. And to be honest, it probably dragged like a boat length maybe, not even, I'd say. And luckily we are at the very end of the anchorage so we cannot yeah, exactly. possibly tumble into anybody if we do drag on our anchor. The one benefit about being the furthest boat out as always. When we first got here, we were like, Oh yeah, we'll definitely re-anchor in the morning a bit further in. And we never do. We never do these things. <laughs> I think A, we like kind of like it. Here. Yeah, exactly. And B, we're also like, well, the view's the same from here. It is, is in there. The water's just a little shallower. And there's your snoring to consider. Oh shush, I do not snore. Out 
Adam was just about to remind us of something that you said last week. Literally last week, I said. See, if it's not spiders one week, it's crabs. Eight <laughs> legs, six legs now. What's next week then? Gee, be snakes. <laughs> oh, please don't be snakes. Four legs. So. <laughs> oh. No, no, that's in about three weeks, babe. Good snakes. Well, imagine when we get to centipedes. <laughs> Literally just last week we had spot. I said we have spiders. This week we have crabs. Jeez, what's it going to be like when we get to centipedes? <laughs> Bang! <laughs> we found them. We skipped the snakes though. I did say, oh, please don't let it be snakes. So we skipped the snakes. We found centipedes on our travels. <laughs> our guides are going to lead us along. Adam, the dog whisperer. I swear to God, he's more dog than man. So we thought we'd have a nice little morning walk. Um, there's a beautiful kind of rock side walk along here that goes on to beaches in the middle. So you walk past the town, a few beaches, and a nice kind of rocky walk. Which I thought it would be good to kind of stretch your legs in the morning. Oh, a third dog. Oh. <laughs> what? Well, we have every stray on the island. So how did you manage to get almost every single dog along with us? I found my intellectual equivalents. A few more up there. <laughs> It's like you have a pack. <laughs> oh. Oh, <God. laughs> a nice quiet morning walk with <laughs> five dogs with us. <laughs> How does this happen? <laughs> Now that we've riled every single dog up on the island, because we've pretty much walked all the dogs into different territories, and so they're all like being defensive, <laughs> we think it's time to leave. We started a, we started a gang war amongst the... Uh... <laughs> There's a beach though that we, uh, we couldn't quite get to while walking. So we're gonna go to the thingy there. Well, I think yeah. we might get a bit wet, but not from swimming from this downpour that looks like it's coming. We have cameras in our bags, so we might need to make a, a run for it back to the boat. Look how far away we are. We are like embarrassingly far out. Oh, I have to move in. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, really... I think I have to move in. Like this is just embarrassing how far out we are. You can see the rain. <laughs> Well, we have another early start. It's about seven o'clock and we've kind of been putting things away for the last hour, just getting ready for another sail. We've finally found a bit of a window that we might be able to head further south. There's a bit of wind, 
but there's not like crazy amounts and um, because we do have a heavy boat it is sometimes a little harder to get her going in light winds so we're a little bit like oh we might need to pull her we might not but what we're planning to do is uh, this is 140 miles all the way down to Trinidad. It's seven o'clock now. We're expecting to kind of arrive um, tomorrow at about 10, 11, 12 ish, like midday. We've kind of had to file a float plan in order to get to Trinidad to like tell them that we're coming. Yeah, planning to set, it, set sail now. so hazy today it's really strange because like you can see the shape of islands around here but not actually like you just hope that you're not going to bang into them really <laughs> obviously you're looking at GPS but like you can just see the the vague outline or like we, we're trying to aim for this in fact we're trying not to aim for this one very small island and you can't see it ahead of you you don't know where it is or oh, maybe that's it over there like it's just you can't make out anything in all this haze. It's really eerie. Imagine not having a child brought up, trying to do this with nothing but a sextant. Oh my goodness. A dead reckoning. You'd be like, oof. You want to, imagine coming through here at night with oh. nothing but charts and a compass. That's what Trev, Trev, our mate Trevor Robinson told me a story once and he just casually threw down the fact that he was like, yeah, I just smashed up on the rocks in St. Vincent. <laughs> what? Excuse me? And it was a part of a whole different story that was equally as interesting and he just casually threw that out there. I was like, what? You smashed your boat on the rocks in St. Vincent. He's like, yeah, I washed up a shore with nothing but my wallet, which was empty. And then he proceeded to like work here for a year or something as a charter, a charter skipper. As you were saying that, I was like, well, I know somebody who's come through here and come very unstuck for that exact reason. So we're tracking down, or we're going to, we're tracking the Grenadines at the moment. We're on our way down to the windward side of Grenada and then we're going to turn south for Trinidad. And we have to pass through, we don't have to pass through it rather, we have to avoid it. Uh, the oil fields where they have their oil rigs sort of to the north of Trinidad. And you have to file a float plan when you go through there with the Coast Guard because I'm reluctant to say piracy, but it is an area where there have been issues in the past and subsequently they would like to know the comings and goings of all boats um, so that the Coast Guard who uh, guards the, the oil fields can be aware of your passing through. They have some documentation on file of who's going to be passing through and when. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to play it yet. Our options are to run dark or to not really. Um, I don't think I'll run dark. I could be tempted to turn the AIS transmission off and just receive, but part of me thinks that I, I just, I don't like joining the hype train and, train and being worried about things. Like there hasn't been an attack in a long time. It's a 70 mile stretch of water. We'll be doing it through the night and there's, like they're onto it. They're doing the right thing. So, I don't know. I have the rest of the day to chew on it. I'll let you know what I decide. <laughs>
haven't had it down for like this while we're sailing. Yeah. You don't usually get rain without a corresponding squall and a, and a horrible wind. But strangely, I can actually see some blue sky, which is uh, weird today because it's just been white. It's just been like a whiteout. It is just after 5 p.m. We managed to sail all the way through the day, which was unexpected actually. Like the forecast said it was going to drop off at about two or sometime between lunchtime and 2 p.m. I didn't expect to be doing five plus knots all day under a one reef and a full head sail. We've just got rid of the staysail because the wind has shifted a little bit behind the beam and one was blanketing the other. We are currently just adjacent Grenada and in, but basically by the time the sun sets in another hour or so we'll be clearing the windward side, we're not in the lee, uh, of Grenada and into the home stretch really. It's about 80 miles to go. Tonight's entertainment includes dodging oil rigs and praying that we don't get a visit from pirates. <laughs> no, the pirates, I want, I'm not going into it. It's it's too strong of a word. There has been drama here in the past. There is all kinds of stories about things that have happened. I don't know. I don't think it's I don't think it's a hot a hot spot. I think it's a handful of bad eggs that have subsequently been chased off. I don't think we have too much to worry about. With regards to my comments earlier about going dark, we've opted to do the right thing. AIS will remain on, nav lights will remain on. We will simply simply sail through here like any other stretch of water. I'm not perpetuating the myth or the, the hype or the fear mongering. I am aware, however, that that will be too late. So what am I going to do if somebody rolls up on us tonight? Somebody unofficial. I am certainly not going to roll over and play dead. I reckon I'll put the motor on, go hell for leather, make all pace at, well, make all pace at, you know, up to hull speed as best I can manage it for as long as I can manage it. I will probably take a windward course to make boarding as difficult as possible and I'll be on the radio, hit the DSC, screaming, screaming mayday to whoever will listen, hope that we can, um, Hope that we get help before someone gets aboard. That is the plan. That is what I will do. Hope it doesn't come to that. It won't. It really won't. For this evening, I expect the weather to pretty well maintain. I think we're going to, basically, it's going to be business as usual. Much of a muchness from what it is now, right up to about 2 to 4 a.m. when it is scheduled to drop off. Unfortunately, the window that we've chosen, no matter which way you cut it, there was always going to be a calm on arrival, which is fine because you basically, once you go through the, the main channel to Trinidad, you're pretty well in the lee of the island. You, you, you're motoring regardless. So as long as we can carry a sail, I'm happy and I, I will hope to keep the motoring to a minimum. So far, so good. It's probably a point of note that we have a, a reasonable following sea. It's not high and I'm very glad that it's behind us because if this was uh, dead on the beam or heaven forbid, on the nose, it would be a very different set of circumstances because uh, with about you know 10 to 15 knots and a big beam swell, when you start reaching the low end of that or sub 10 knots for our boat, a decent beam swell can really knock the wind out of your sails and make sailing very difficult. But in this case, it's actually pushing us along. It's just off the port quarter, so it's actually giving us like a the occasional one to two knot push in the right direction. So, crush your fingers and toes. It stays like that. 